Welcome to the Mirror Talks podcast, where we deconstruct some of humanity's most disconnecting and limiting assumptions and offer an alternative, a free state of consciousness, unbiased, naturally wise, and genuinely loving. We will shed a more enlightened perspective on everyday experiences to help anyone willing realize their true potential and inspire a contemporary spiritual life lift in service to all. Say goodbye to the man-made paradigms of distorted ideas. Let's become pure, free, and actually intelligent once again. In this episode, we talk about respect and specifically respect in family relationships and partnerships and all kinds of relationships. Um, one of the main nuances in this episode is how so often what we think is a respectful connection or a respectful dynamic is actually completely dishonoring and disrespectful. And in Bentinho's words is not honoring the law of respect, which is really honoring somebody's complete free will, their own capacity to make their own choices and follow their own alignment, their own connection to source. So this episode is an awesome episode for sort of deconstructing some of the, some of the main assumptions and expectations we have of each other and of our relationships um, and sort of reorienting us in a way that is actually truly respectful. So I hope you enjoy. A lot of people have overbearing family members who don't know the true spiritual cosmological laws of respect. Mm -hmm. They think they do. They think respect is showing up at Christmas every year. Yeah. But there's no rule book in the universe that says you should show up at Christmas every day. And mm -hmm. that if you don't, you're a bad person. It's completely made up, right? Just yeah. as an example. It's just an example of how people in a myriad of ways expect things from other people as if they're objects. We're no longer seeing each other as free entities with a direct line to the creator that wants to express itself here in a unique way. Mm -hmm. We try to keep each other boxed in as objects that please our sense of insecurity. And then we call that boxed in pleased sense of insecurity so that we don't have to feel it. We call it family. Mm -hmm. And we call it family importance. And we call it family matters. I'm not saying family doesn't matter. It's, it is important that each find, finds mm -hmm. their own family that each finds their support. But that doesn't always mean that it's your, um, the parents that you were born to, or the family that you were born into, that can mm -hmm. change over the years, we are free beings, and that needs to be respected. Yeah. What I think people really want when they feel this sort of negative energy latching onto between them and their family, this sort of toxic relationship. Mm -hmm. It's not that they want to cut the ties or that they even have to cut the ties. But what they want is they want to know the laws of respect, and they want to be able to teach their family how to respect them. And mm -hmm. then if they don't consistently, then it might be time to cut some ties or to block some, mm -hmm. to block some relationships or just say like, I'm not going to respond until you demonstrate that you've learned how I wish to be treated and respected, which is not as an object, mm -hmm. which is not um, yeah, as an object, because yeah. really, this cute perspective a lot of people have in traditional 3D reality is that it's respectful, somehow it's okay, it's justifiable mm -hmm. to see your child as an object, or to see your parent as an object, or to see your partner as an object, mm -hmm. and that they are somehow your possession. And if they don't behave within a certain paradigm of ex your expectations, then they are out of line. Mm -hmm. It's a completely reversed view of the actual, actual spiritual cosmological law of respect, yep. as I pronounce it here today, which is, uh, other beings are not an object. You don't own them or possess them. They don't owe you anything. They don't have to meet your standards or expectations. They don't have to fulfill your insecurities dressed up as loving desires for family time. Yeah. Truth. It's just simple truth. Look at it objectively. Nobody belongs to you. Mm -hmm. Fact. Deal with it. You might feel insecure. Oh, but then I'm so alone. Oh, but then I won't have this this family box. You know, and maybe you won't. Yeah. So that still doesn't change the cosmological law. That respect means you honor everyone's own free will mm -hmm. to a T. You can suggest, you can ask, 
but you cannot expect, mm -hmm. right? You can suggest, you can offer, you can share your points of view, you can share your feelings, you can even ask or invite, but you cannot expect. Yeah. And if you expect, and then people behave differently, because they have their own choice, yep. that should be respected. And so it seems in your case, and in many people's cases, there's this, especially with family, and especially if one or two individuals within a family kind of become more spiritually evolved, and they start to wake up to this cosmic law, and they start to wake up to their passion in life, and their calling mm -hmm. in life, and they start to make their own choices that don't fit the generational pattern of the family they were born in, then they're breaking that mold of those expectations that keeps this box they call family importance. And that provides them with a false sense of psychological security, mm -hmm. bless their hearts, they break away from that. And that's only natural. It happens yeah. in, in the animal kingdom, like consistently. If you come back, the parents even eat you in some animals It's like, get get away. Now you're a threat to my pack. It's very different from how humans uh, interact. We're so attached to our children, we're so attached to our family. Because we fear that without them, we we lack love and security and company and so forth. Which I understand, it's, that's a painful delusion. Mm -hmm. but it is a delusion, but it is a painful projection of the mind. It's a painful play of thoughts. But still, even though you're suffering from that play of thoughts, still doesn't make your daughter or your stepdaughter or your brother or whatever, or your partner, still doesn't make them your object. No. And it seems that you and many other people, and myself in the past included, have tolerated that type of a toxic connection yeah. of expectation and playing into those expectations and sacrificing one's own freedom and choices and path and passions for the sake of appeasing people's pain out of love, out of care to mm -hmm. some degree, but also for the most part out of fear for perhaps for our own rejection and a fear for wanting to trigger their pain and their insecurity and their loneliness and so forth and not wanting to be disrespectful. But again, you can't be cosmologically speaking disrespectful if you're following your highest alignment. Yeah. And if you're trusting in your own choices. Um, and as long as they respect that, you can have a wonderful relationship, even if you hardly ever see them physically, mm -hmm. you have a wonderful connection. As long as there's that mutual respect, if there's not that mutual respect, and in a lot of 3D families, matrix families, systems, there's a lot of expectation. There's a lot of cultural dogma, mm -hmm. which doesn't make it true, just because you were born in India, and in India, they believe family matters most. And just an example. And if you don't honor your parents in a certain way for the rest of your life, mm -hmm. that is a disgrace to the family. Actually, it's not. That's a delusion. Mm -hmm. It's not cosmologically true. It's not an objective fact. It's just a personal preference but it's been reinforced for so long, still doesn't make it true, doesn't make it true respect. Mm -hmm. So you have to teach your family, anyone you relate to, you have to teach them how to respect you. Because mm -hmm. if you don't, they won't, they'll yeah. just paste their preferences onto you, they'll just paste their expectations onto you, they'll just treat you like an object mm -hmm. to appease their own suffering, which is not love, it is not respect, no matter how you justify it by calling it family matters, or mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. It still doesn't change the fact that law cannot be changed. Yeah. Law of respect is each entity is their own free being, and their free will should be absolutely mm -hmm. honored. If you cross that line, if you start expecting, you're in breach of respect, not them. Yeah. We can't teach our friends and family mm -hmm. how to respect us if we don't if we if we don't show them the consequences of not respecting us mm -hmm. in the way that we we value being respected then they and they don't have to because the same way goes from you to them they don't have to respect you yeah that would be you disrespecting them they can absolutely <laughs> not respect you but at some point you got to show them the consequences yeah of treating you in that way otherwise you're not owning your self respect you're not developing this no nonsense, truthful policy of authenticity. And then people don't know how to respect you. Mm -hmm. And once you do, and they adjust to it, then you can open back up your borders, if you will, you can open mm -hmm. back up, because then it's no longer a toxic relationship. It's no longer a toxic energy filament that's connected to you. 
So we, it's very important that we teach others how to respect us by knowing what respect means, recognizing mm -hmm. it in ourselves, and also giving it to them. Yeah. You feel free to choose this if you want. Mm -hmm. right? But I'm not having it very like this is not yeah. going to lead to your desired result of me coming to visit. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to demonstrate <laughs> that by That's not, great. I'm not going to demonstrate that by not visiting. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you continue, if you keep this up, after two, three, four, clear communications, and you're not owning your side, of, you're not even acknowledging how you're crossing this boundary, then I'm sorry, but uh, I'm, I'm not going to interact with you anymore. Mm -hmm. And that then is the message, and then they have an opportunity to learn, because you're demonstrating in loving ways, you're mm -hmm. not, you know, you're yeah. not hiring an assassin, yeah. because you respect their free will to not respect you. But you got to respect yourself and then no longer interact with them. Mm -hmm. If they don't listen, if they're not open for true communication, they don't show progress in their respect for you. Yeah. Genuine progress, not just like fake progress. And you kind of had an example of that. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I have a friend who's trying to sort of lure his daughter to spend more time with him by practicing non attachment but he'll learn just enough about non-attachment to get her to be sort of like drawn in. And then, uh, and then he gets kind of attached to it. So then he just wants more, you mm -hmm. know, call me again. Why didn't we, why didn't we talk last night and come visit me tomorrow? And then she backs off. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So that's a um, sweet attempt, but uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's still disingenuous at the core, right? because it is still about self. It's not about respecting the other. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know the person you speak of, and I think he is amazing. And he'll get there. Yeah. I really right. trust he'll get there. Yeah. No, I, and I, I know he's a very sincere uh, guy. But in this example, it is fundamentally, mechanically, an insincere attempt at sincerity. Right. <laughs> exactly. And a lot of people do that out of ignorance or out of innocence or just because we have become victimized by our own sort of lack of mental, emotional mastery and self fulfillment, and understand because we create these situations for ourselves of loneliness or abandonment or and we naturally crave company, we naturally crave love and affection and family. So I'm not saying we should disband family. Uh, but we should learn respect. And then the family unit should be oriented around that respect, respect shouldn't be oriented around the attachment to the family unit the wrong way around. It's a toxic system. Mm. And then especially the younger generation, they, more and more, you see, they want to break free from that, they no longer fit in that mold. And maybe that's been the case for previous generations as well. But I don't think as yeah, much more than ever now. Yeah, with the whole like all the opportunities that are available right now with the internet and travel and all that. that and wasn't then people the case not already. recreating that same structure for themselves, like young people now are not getting right. married the same and having kids mm -hmm. the same. Right. And that is seen as, or that's, some people attempt to then label that as disrespect. Right. But it's actually not. By law, it's not disrespectful. Because the law says, respect means to honor another's free will. Mm. There's no, there's no deviation on this possible. But then it becomes preference and bias. It no longer is law. It no longer is truth. It is now personal projection, personal vomit, personal attachment. And it is therefore disrespect, even if we call it respectful, and we justify it with tradition, or we justify it with dogma, or we justify it with stigma, or whatever we use to justify it with. Or we justify it with, uh, with emotionally begging or manipulating mm -hmm. in different ways. Mm -hmm. I understand, but it still violates the law of respect. So it should, it should just be clearly communicated and we should teach each other. Because ultimately, mm -hmm. if we don't teach our parents and we don't teach our family and we don't teach our friends how to, what respect is, how to respect us, they also will never respect themselves. And they'll never be encouraged to find the path of self-mastery and to find that fulfillment that they think you provide them with within themselves, within their own mastery. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a beautiful opportunity to be of service to your family and yes. yourself at the exact same time by making the exact same uh, choice yeah. of full ownership yeah. of your alignment. And the more, the more, and I speak from experience, the more powerfully you fully own 
your self respect, and you demonstrate that and you don't deviate from it, the more loving and patient you're able to be. Mm -hmm. Because you're not, you're not selling yourself, you're not prostituting yourself out to your family. Mm -hmm. You're not, you're not up for sale. Yeah, I'm not up for sale. And because that feels so good. I'm not up for sale, mom, dad, mm -hmm. family partner, I'm not you can try whatever you want. I'm not up for sale. I'm not your object. Yeah, but didn't. Mm -hmm. I hear you. I'm not your object. It makes sense. Uh, no, it doesn't make sense. Oh. I'm not your object. Mm -hmm. At some point, they'll get it that you're not mm -hmm. an object. People see you as objects, your family sees you as an object, mm -hmm. you're just a pawn in their game. And it's justified by a whole mm. load of f false love, mm -hmm. dressed up as real love. And I'm not saying there is no core of love present as well, but it's mm -hmm. just been distorted through these manipulative layers of insecurity and then pain and fear of loneliness and fear of whatever. Mm -hmm as understandable as all that is in the human game, and as much compassion and patience as that deserves, it still breaks fundamental law of respect. And we got to teach each other this. It's just one of those painful effects like fire is hot. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. You can argue all you want, fire is going to burn your skin at the end of the day. So don't get too close to the fire. Mm -hmm. Be deluded all you might, all you, all you want to be, have, have, you know, Believe all you want to believe about the fire, make up stories, make up traditions, the fire is still going to burn your skin, fire is going to teach you that we got to teach each other self respect and respect for others. So to me, it sounds like mm -hmm. feels like seems like this is your invitation to yourself to fully own your mm -hmm. ownership of yourself, yeah, your authenticity, and not make any not be like, mm hmm, Mm -hmm. I'm going to shove this little 10% that's still leaking out for mm -hmm. their sake. I'm going to shove that under the rug and because I feel good. Mm -hmm. And I have my freedom and I can do this and I will probably choose what I want to choose anyway. But still, you're not you're not teaching them how to respect you. And yeah. Therefore, the leakage continues. And that leakage becomes more and more of a weight on you. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is the case for everybody. The more we advance along our own path, the less we'll blend in with the family we were born into. A lot mm -hmm. of the times, so that's just the way it goes, unless they also somehow magically are on the same path, or a very yeah. similar path. But you're not destined to grow old and die with the same family you were born into. That's not cosmic mm -hmm. law. That's human invention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, tradition, respect, love, that's like so I true. gave birth to you, I, I, I spent a million dollars raising you. Yes, mm -hmm. you did, but that was your choice. Should have thought it through. <laughs> mm -hmm. This still doesn't make me your object. Thank you so much. I mm -hmm. love you so much, and I appreciate this so much. But I came here to express the Creator in my mm -hmm. own unique way. And this is how I wish to be respected. And I respect you, and I love you, and I, I wish all the best for you. And I'll take care of you to the best of my ability when it's in my alignment. But it's not my ultimate responsibility in life mm -hmm. as a Creator in human form. And I need you to understand that and respect that. And if you don't, our communications are going to become more and more robotic, mm -hmm. and maybe even less and less present at all. Until you demonstrate true respect for me, then we can relate and interact mm -hmm. as free beings and learn from each other and love each other freely, and support each other and find the best solutions in whatever scenario happens. Of course, you want to help your mm -hmm. parents provide for your parents, make sure they have a uh, a beautiful future, but it's not our ultimate responsibility. Mm -hmm. And they cannot expect that from us just because they gave birth to us. They just yeah. can't. It's not cosmic law, it's human invention. It's human preference. Mm -hmm. Fire burns, doesn't matter what you call it, you can call it water, it's still going to burn you. Respect is respect, it needs to mm -hmm. be learned. And we need to navigate our problems around that and our desires around that, not to try to alter the law of respect to fit our mm -hmm. agenda for covering up our own insecurities and our pain and our fear of loneliness and so forth and our lack beliefs. You're not their object. Mm -hmm. You're not their ribbon. You're yeah. not their, you know, you're just not. It's mm -hmm. just not the truth. And I, I think what everyone wants to own is their freedom. And then we can relate with true generosity and true love. But we if, if they don't respect that, Mm -hmm. consistently, then it ends, the communication ends until the lesson has been learned. The only way to teach others is to make them experience the consequences of their actions. 
as it <laughs> pertains to our free choice. <laughs> it's just the way it is. I mean, it's kind of a harsh truth, perhaps, for mm-hmm. a lot of people. But it, it, a harsh truth or or a soft truth doesn't change. It's still the truth. Yeah. Just sharing what's true. Mm. And this is a good example for the teaching of love and wisdom, right? Mm-hmm. Every choice can be made when we want to be of service to others. We can be more inclined towards the love approach, or we can be more inclined towards the wisdom approach, or we can try to find that somehow that perfect balance and unity, that refinement of the two, mm-hmm. where it's not an extreme in wisdom and apparently lacking love, or sometimes actually kind of lacking love and compassion and patience, or it's this extreme love where we kind of uh, neglect ourselves and we lose oversight of the bigger picture and we forget that everyone is responsible for themselves and that everyone is ultimately okay and taken care of and that each entity has their own higher self and so mm-hmm. forth. So we ultimately, we want to attain this sort of balanced view of love and wisdom, this unity view, mm-hmm. uh, commensurate with sixth density level of consciousness. Although you might feel as much love and compassion in your heart at a fundamental level for that entity and understand their suffering, the first response, the first teaching is, wait a second, who do you think you are? Mm -hmm. Why do you believe you're entitled to my life? You are not, let's be really clear, you're not entitled to my life. I owe you nothing. I love you. I wish all the best, Mm -hmm. but I owe you nothing. So wisdom. As long as you don't prostitute yourself out to someone else's expectations, Mm -hmm. as long as you don't sell your soul to someone else's expectations, as long as you allow that wisdom approach to keep you in your own ownership, then the love can be pulled back in. But if someone infiltrates, the wisdom becomes more needed. And we need to clearly set our boundaries and make clear what respect means to us. Mm -hmm. Then if they, it doesn't mean that from behind the scenes, this is what you're Mm -hmm. teaching them. If we're fully balanced and not reactive, we just feel like, oh, it starts to get icky. Like they start to try to control our lives. You can still have a balanced view if you're trained. Mm -hmm. Behind that, your root can still be based in love. Like, I understand where she's coming from. She's a person in pain and she's trying to appease her pain by using me. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen, but I see I have compassion for that. I've done it in many ways in my life. And I understand. I understand what it feels like and I have patience for it. But I have patience for it as long as she doesn't breach my boundaries. So that's why the wisdom then is needed. If she then retreats and starts learning and respecting you, then the approach towards her, the service you can now provide her with is greater love. But what you often find is if you do it too soon, if you're too lovey dovey again too soon, and their habit hasn't been destroyed yet, their understanding of respect hasn't been finalized, which is kind of like the game that your friend is playing with his daughter, then there is this tug of war. And I'm just telling all parents, if you play that game, uh, ultimately, they're going to get tired of it. It's not going to be productive. It depends, of course, also on their self-respect. But here, like, look at it also in this way. Do you really want your child to not respect itself? Do you really want it to play into your manipulations? Would you like your child to visit you out of guilt? Because you guilt tripped them, you manipulated them. Is that what you want? Think about it. Does that feel good? Hmm? It was a nice visit. You want to keep up those appearances? Or you want to choose real, radical, courageous love and face your own fears for loneliness and lack of comfort and lack of respect from others, perhaps, and so forth, and become more not attached by your self mastery of your own happiness, therefore being able to communicate this much better to your children and your family and so forth. To which point to a point where the relationship becomes genuinely love based and respect based. Respect is love. If you don't respect me, it's not love, it's fear. I respect your fear. I love your fear. I understand your fear. I have compassion for it. But on a relative level, I'm not having it. And out of love, I'm teaching you, using wisdom, the consequences of your actions and your manipulations. 
If you then learn from those consequences, there's no harshness around my heart. I'm doing my own work, my healing work, my acceptance of your previous manipulations. And as long as I no longer need that distance from my own healing, which I also need to respect, because if this type of manipulation has been happening from birth, it might be deeply entrenched and there might be a long journey for some people to healing that and getting that out of their system, which may not be facilitated so well by being in direct contact with their parents. So one also needs to know one's own limitations. But in the ideal case where someone does work on that healing and it works effectively, then there is no harshness, there's no resistance around anyone's heart towards their parents, as long as you respect their choices. It's a great point, though, for parents to know that the kid may need some time to heal from a lifetime of going through that type of a man manipulation. Yeah. Like there might be a bit of a lag time after your breakthrough yeah. and non-attachment and, non and, and learning to respect your child before they actually come mm -hmm. back. Yeah. And Anurag says it in a nice way when he says, love has two sides, soft and firm. Mm -hmm. But we tend to go doormat asshole, mm -hmm. right? So like too far on either side of yeah. the spectrum. But ac so actually firmness is part of balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's part of adjusting things and uh, perpetuating greater balance. So yeah, I don't think and it's so tempting for us. And it has been for my life for, for the most part of my life, it's been a challenge to assert that firmness. Mm -hmm. because in my mind, also in my conditioning, that was also associated. And for most people, because this is our societal kind of viewpoint, for the most part, is that firmness means harshness, right. or that firmness yeah. means disrespect. But it's not, it's just a clear, it's just clarity. It's just a clear, loving demonstration of sh demonstrating to others how we wish to be respected. And if they do, all is well. And if they don't, there's either no communication, or there is firmer communication. If they still don't understand, there's even firmer communication, all out of love. If they still don't understand, there is no communication. If they then understand, their communication can open back up, you know, mm -hmm. provided that they really have made that change, which is rare. It's typically a, a tug of war game, like, oh, I'll, I'll show you a little bit more respect. But still, I want you as my object. So and relationships, right. partners do mm -hmm. this all the time. Yeah like boyfriend, girlfriend dynamics. It's like, Oh, yeah, okay, okay, so this is how she wished to be respected. So I'm going to demonstrate that. And then when she comes back in, I'm going to get fully attached again, like it's not a true change. Mm -hmm. It's not self mastery. And then you get this back and forth, like breaking up, getting back together, breaking up, getting back together, breaking, you know, this endless game until the true change has been made. Yeah. What about people who are on the side of um, n being disrespectful or not respecting their partner or their child, and they can sort of see that manipulative tendency in themselves. Like, so, but before waiting for the catalyst to come from their like child rejecting them or their partner, mm -hmm. I mean, what if they wanna start actually cleaning that up in themselves? Well, you tell me. The first thing that comes to mind is to admit it mm -hmm. just as much as possible. Admit it to your partner or your your children and just, just let your agenda be out in the open so people can make their own decisions around your agenda as you start to clean it up. And then also just like know that the cleanup process is going to be a bit of a process and not to let that deter you Yeah, to keep trying. And there's a few questions people can ask themselves that have a greatly purifying effect that will make them feel instantly better. Such as, do I really want to be manipulative? Is that who I want to be? Make it a matter of character, of honor, of your own soul, of your own relationship to God. And that helps people face it faster because they justify and justify and justify so they don't have to acknowledge right how they're manipulating others in order to be with them in different ways. But if you ask yourself a sharp question, firm question, like grow up, it's time to grow up, 
what do I really want to be? Do I want to be a source of love? Or do I want to be a source of pretense, fakeness, falseness, manipulation, selfish intent? And do I really want to place that upon my children? Do I really want to put that on my partner, and so forth? Nice. Would I rather be? Would I rather have my pain, my insecurity, my lack beliefs, my stories, appeased temporarily, like a band aid on a wound, with no further treatment, a festering wound that needs proper treatment? But would I just want to put a band aid on it by having my family around for Christmas? Would I rather have that? Would I rather have other people appease my lack beliefs? Or be a source of genuine love for them? Most people won't pause to ask that question because they already know the answer and they don't want to go there because they don't want to admit their strategies and they don't want to admit their attachment to not wanting to face their own pain, their fear of facing their own pain and dealing with it in different ways. But there's different ways to deal with our pain than we've been taught. And I teach these methods and, and they're free for everyone to enjoy. So do the work, we have to do the work, we have to want to purify ourselves. If we don't, every relationship is a lost temporary cause. And at the end of our life at our deathbed, uh, maybe we'll have a glimpse of what we've done, and how we've been. And maybe then we'll have an awakening of sorts, a liberation of sorts. But why wait? you know, die to your own ego before then. Nice. And what's, what's it like, if you take it all the way, which I think you've done one of the few people I've ever met that I think has taken it all the way, and really doesn't expect from people, then there is just love. It reminds me of what you're reading from the Vastisha, Vastishta? Yoga Vastishta. Uh-huh about um, total self control. Mm -hmm. I get a similar vibe from completely respecting people and having total self control. Mm -hmm. Mere consciousness. Hmm. Our natural state, our natural state of love, light and generosity. The quickest path to this is to recognize that God that is all that is. But most people don't want to go that subtle, or they seem to not be able to at the moment. So then we can talk about more relative methods and insights like we just did. But the ultimate approach to resolve all delusions is to recognize one's essential true nature as that pure, undivided unity consciousness that's at the root of every, every experience we've ever had, or will have. There innate in inherent in that is love is respect it's knowledge of free will it is sensitivity it's insight it's intuitiveness it's generosity all the qualities we aspire to and that we try to enforce by having laws and rules and and uh, morals and values and family meetings and <laughs> all that is already what we are we've just covered it up with a lot of beliefs that are false that make us suffer Emotional guidance system lets us know those beliefs are false because we suffer. That is the guidance letting us know that we believe falsely. So now we can dissolve these beliefs by recognizing that our essential nature is not limited, cannot die, is not ever lonely, um, is not ever lacking love or freedom or joy or and so forth. By that recognition, we purify ourselves the fastest. And then we become an abode of love and peace and generosity and respect. And then we start to see through all the fake rules of society, the fake uh, expectations. Beautiful. Cool. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Kay. Yeah, thanks for Let's the example. See. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Mirror Talks podcast with Bentinho Massaro. If you love these teachings and you want full access to almost all of Bentinho's recorded material, go to bentinomassaro.tv. Right now, we're offering a free seven-day trial with unlimited access to everything on bentinomassaro.tv, including curated playlists, guided meditations, and much more. This is our number one recommendation for you. As a subscriber, 
you'll get first access to these podcast episodes two weeks before they go public. You'll also get access to exclusive Q&As with Bentinho and other content only available to subscribers of BentinhoMassaro.tv. Also, Bentinho recently created a free online global enlightenment retreat. It's eight long-form sessions that coherently guide you through the foundation of his enlightenment teachings. You can watch the free online global enlightenment retreat at BentinhoMassaro.tv or on YouTube. If you're interested in the most current and complete overview of Bentinho's work to date, this is where we recommend you start. Another great resource is Trinfinity Academy, Bentinho's free online school for enlightenment, empowerment, and infinity. Each class is concise and clear and distills one key topic at a time, including homework. We strongly recommend you check out Trinfinity Academy if you want to master the mechanics of Bentinho's teachings. Finally, don't underestimate the value of sharing this episode with the people who came to mind as you were watching or listening. It's a service to them and the collective, and it's also the best thing you can do to support us in getting this message far and wide. We also encourage you to like, subscribe, and leave positive reviews and ratings on your preferred platforms, and follow Bentinho on social media, especially Instagram. Thank you 